Hello there, my mate Vince here, and in this video today we're going to be looking at items sent in by viewers. So I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on each one, fingers crossed, I'm just going to whiz through them. Some of them may not actually be worth repairing value-wise, but they still might be interesting to look at. For example, this one here, it's not a particularly expensive product. I never knew something like this existed, I had to Google it. Basically, it's something to sterilize, sanitize your toothbrushes. And you can also put your toothpaste in here as well. And you press this little lever down here and the toothpaste comes out. It's supposed to shine a UV light. I don't know when, I think it's when you move away from it. And it's not supposed to be a con. I did a quick Google search and apparently UV light will kill most of the bacteria that builds up on toothbrushes. And it says here, Hi Vince, I sent you this item for you to do a tea break repair on if possible. The micro USB got knocked off when the other half moved it while charging. I tried to solder a new one on, but I fear I burnt traces off in the off during the attempt. If you can get it working, it's yours as I've bought a new one, Colin. And it just says here, the components in the bag here. And also it might have other problems. The solar panel on the battery could be faulty. So things like this have been sent into my PO box. I will flash it up on screen there. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna keep it because Raw Mail do charge for that service. And if I'm honest with you, I only seem to get something in maybe once every two or three months. So uh, uh, as well as that, the uh, I'm not sure how many items go missing. I, I know in the past things have definitely gone missing that have been sent into the PO box. So I'm not sure how uh, good a service it is. I think it works well when you send something from the UK. I think when you send it via courier or from other countries, then uh, I think there's a high chance of things going missing. Right, so I can see at the side here, that's where the USB would have gone. And there's also a little switch here for on and off. This must be the sensor. Oh. Oh, okay, so it's got a 18650, I presume. Right, let's unplug that. Well, that seems very loose. Oh, what have we got any voltage in that? It's interesting, nothing at all. Anyway, let's see what's the, what the damage is like. So this is a solar panel here. Oh, there we go, so that wire's out there as well. All right, so maybe that's why it wasn't charging up. Possibly. Let's get this little board out. So these must be the little UV lights down here. Just here on this board. So, yeah, I can see a hot soldering iron has been on here. But you know, it does look like this. I think it might be just a ground pads that ripped off there. So it might be okay. Well, I wonder, is that flux there or is that burnt? I think that might be flux. Okay, so what have we got going on? It's just this one here and this one here. So that should be all okay, I think. Let's get the soldering iron on it and try to clean it up a bit. Right, I'm just adding some of my own flux. And are these anchor? I think these are anchor. Let's try to clean them out. Right, that's going to be intact. That's going to be intact. I think that's going to be okay. Let's get some isopropyl alcohol on it and clean it all up. Right, that looks much, much, much better. And I can clearly see here that that trace is gonna be all right going to this one, and that trace is gonna be okay going to this one. Right, what's it look like in there? Might be okay. Let's just squeeze that bit in a little bit. Yeah, I think it probably just came off in its entirety with the uh, with the actual plug, you know. Right, that all looks all right, doesn't it? Let's give that a little clean up. Oh, 
Right, let's see now, is that going to place back on here? I think it will, yeah. I'm just adding a little bit of flux to that. I'm going to try to do the pins first. And then I'll do the anchor points. I'm just going to add a bit of pressure down with the tweezers. And now I'm going to add a bit of solder to each of them. Right, let's get some solder on these ones, spin it over and flood this area. Just going to heat it up first. That should be ample. And that should be ample. Well, I'm going to clean it up and then we can see if it has actually soldered on by giving each one a little nudge. All right, let's give them a little wobble. That one's on, that one's on, but I don't think it goes anywhere. That one is no track for it to go to. That one's on, it doesn't go anywhere. And that one's on. And the uh, big lump of solder gone through from the other side. And there, so I think that's on as good as it ever was. Let's plug things back together and let's see. I mean, the battery's completely discharged now, so by rights it shouldn't really be used because it's gone below the safe level. But let's just see what happens. In oh, do you know what it could be? Maybe there's something in here that's kicked in and it's not allowing, uh, it, you know, it's killed the voltage to it. Maybe when we add a little bit of voltage, we might find it jumps up to three point something volts. Oh, okay, it has actually uh, kept on its little crimp thing. You know, the wire hasn't come out, it's still in its crimp, so we should be able to get that back in. On the blue wire, can you see that little tab sticking out there? And that's the thing that needs to clip into place, that there. So that tab needs to go... here. You can see that one sticking up. Let's try to get that in. Now, so if I force this down here, that should lock it into place. Yeah, there we go. Right, let's see if we've got any voltage on that. No way, eight volts coming from that, that's insane. I've never messed with solar panels before. I like the idea of them though. Let's see if that drops when I cover it up. How good is that? I mean, it is very bright here because of all the studio lights. Wow, okay. So now, will this kick back into life, the battery, or not? Let's see. Right, I wonder now, is that gonna give it any life? Let's plug it in. I'm gonna get a portable charger and see if anything happens. Okay, so I've got my little amp meter here. Let's plug it in and see what it's doing. Well, I've seen something flash for a second. And there we go, look at that. So that says it must be doing something. It must be drawing something. Is there any light here? There's a light here. Right, what happens if we turn that off? Now that's on. That's off. Right, let's just see if that was enough just to kickstart it. So now, on. Yeah, there we go. See the lights on. So the battery probably is working. I think it had probably gone into some sort of safe protection mode. Let's see if we have anything. There you go, 3.2 volts. Okay, happy to charge it from there. This uh, normally would be 3.7 volts, fully charged it would be about 4.2. So I'm gonna put this back together and uh, I'm gonna put it back together. Where does this go? Does this go in here? I think it does.
Right, okay, looks like uh, Colin took away a fair bit of plaster there. So his er original colour looks like it was red. Now, what's he gone for recently? No, I think his original colour was like a lilac colour. Then he's gone to red, and I think maybe recently he's gone over to white. So there we go, the history of Colin's bathroom. Excellent. Right, let's leave this plugged in for a bit and see if it's going to hold any charge. Right, so if you have a look now, you can see that the blue light is on and also the charging's gone down. Now watch this, I'm hitting the corner of the room at the moment, but I'm going to get up now and go near the sensor and you will see the light will come on. So now, there you go. So I've got my hand over it now and you can see the light has come on there. So we now know that the blue light's working and also the sensor's working as well. And it looks like it's doing a charge because it's dropped down to 0.3 off an amp here and it started at uh, 0.7. So that is it, it looks like it is fixed. So what an unusual device that I've never heard of or seen before. So a massive thanks to Colin, you didn't rip the pads there. It was just the USB port came cleanly off and depending on the soldering iron you got and depending on what you're using for magnification, it can be very, very, very hard to use. I mean, this soldering iron here is tiny. It looks look big on camera, but it's not. So a lot of the time it's not lack of skill, it's lack of tools, I think, which is, uh, which is unfortunate. So there we go. Thank you so much, Colin. Let's move on to the next one. Right, next up we have this one here that says Tempus Fudge It On, which I've never heard of before. Apparently it means time flies. So, Time flies because it is a watch, but in this instance, time is not flying. So let's read what it says here. Hi Vince, loving the channel. The Rolls Royce fix up especially gets me shouting at the screen, having been involved with cars most of my life. Following on from your recent watch video, I'm sending you my old Tar Cure. It has been in a drawer for many years. As far as I can remember, I had the battery change and it still didn't work. Have fun and keep on entertaining us. Chris from North Wales. Right, thank you, Chris. Now, this isn't a Targ, but it is like a Targ copy. It's a vintage Krug Barman. This is a Ocean Master. It's got a little date down here as well. And it's 90 pounds here used on eBay. Another one for 40 pound used, but that's a different one. 35 pound used. Well, let's open it up and see what could be wrong with it. Well, this is a screw back. Very loose. Now, what have we got going on here? Well, this is off to begin with. That's hanging off there. Let's zoom in and see if we can work out what's going on. It's not working because we haven't got this top plate on, I presume, and also the battery looks, uh, looks corroded. Let's get a reading off the battery, see if there's anything in it. I think maybe when the battery was changed that this was just left balanced on top instead of screwed on and then maybe it got knocked and it fell away so it wasn't then put in the positive side of it to the mechanism. No, nothing in that battery now. Right, let me uh, Google that and see what the equivalent battery is. Hopefully I'll have a Renata one. Right, okay, I haven't got a Renata on, but I have got one of these ones, 370. Mind you, I've got a 371, and that says 371 there, bear with me. Let's put a 371 in it, because at least then it's going to be a better battery. 371. Let's put a Renata one in, and then we know it's a nice, good quality one. 1.5. So that's fine. Ooh, that's had some wear in here, look at that. Look at that there. Needs a good ultrasonic clean. Let's zoom in and see if we can see where this was originally screwed into. Well, I presume it's here and here. So let's undo those two. Right, looking at this here now, I thought it was to cover up here, but it's not. This is to cover up the coil. And maybe that's why it's not working, if that side's not making a good contact. That goes there, doesn't it? So what's what's going on here? What keeps the battery in? Right, well, I'm gonna pop the screws back in. Maybe it's just friction fit. 
in which case then I think there's more to this than uh, I think it's this was probably taken off to measure the coil I bet it's the coil that's gone in fact we should be able to measure that should we not would it be those two prongs there I wonder yeah because maybe that works its way around from here so let me see if I've got anything here again I've got to be careful not to touch the coil mm, not sure we're in the mega ohms there right I'll uh, I'll screw it back in and see what it's doing. I mean, it's definitely not open, but that looks, I would, expe I would expect something in the kilo ohms, not the mega ohms. But it is measuring something. Right, let's see, does that kick into life? No. It doesn't. I'm thinking it's going to be something to do with the coil because the fact is that this has been taken off for a reason, isn't it? So let's undo a few screws, get the little circuit board out, and then we can look at the coil under the microscope. Right, okay, this is all coming out in one go. Right, okay, so we have it here. Now, it's uh, obviously incredibly small. Can we see, I'm just moving the light around, can we see any damage anywhere? I cannot. Sometimes you can see a scrape. Let's try to put it up a little bit. See if we can see anything here. No, you can see the two tiny wires meeting here. So I think if I was to unsolder them, which I might do, I reckon that nine mega ohms or whatever it is, is actually coming from the board itself and not the coil. I think we'll find that this coil is completely open. It would be nice if we could see a bit of damage. I have managed to fix them in the past, off camera, because sometimes I like to mess around with watches, by putting silver conductive paint on them. Now, what, what's that doing there? Real gentle, is that, a, is that the end there? There, does that look loose? Is that the end? Yeah, that is the end, isn't it? See, if the brake was just here, you might be able to unravel a couple of convolutions. Annoyingly, this all looks perfect. Oh, no, nah, see, I was going to say that's a scrape along there, but it's not. That looks like it's some kind of coating that's been put on top. Right, okay, well, I suppose what I could do is unsolder the wires and see if the mega ohms is coming from the actual board itself. I mean, obviously, you can buy a new movement for this. Personally, I'm not going to. But if I could fix the movement here, I'd be happy. There we go, I'm free there. Let's try to uh, get this one free as well. Right, let me see now if it's coming from the board. So you should be able to just see my meter in the corner of the shop there. And let's go across here. Yeah, there you go, seven mega ohms. So unfortunately the coil's completely open, it needs a new coil. I wonder, could I just try? Let's solder those bits back on, and let's see if I can just try to put silver paint all over it. Right, again, you can see through the camera there that it's this stuff here. You get them from China very, very cheaply, we're talking do you know what, maybe this is better stuff, I can't remember, but you can get them from China for a few pounds. So I'm just gonna place a little bit on my mat here. There we go. And I'm gonna rub all that around that coil. Right, so this is the most likely place that's gonna get damaged across the top here. So these often get damaged by a screwdriver that goes a little bit stray. If you have to undo a screw or two screws to get a new battery in, it's very easy to slip. And if you just tap this coil, it will easily snap one of those wires because these are just enameled wires. For example, it might be 50 meters 
on this on a big long coil and they don't short against each other they're completely insulated against each other because they're enamel so it looks like one big bit of copper but it's not if you were to unravel this all you could have 50 meters or 100 meters and then it would have continuity from one end to the other but not in between so all i'm doing here is putting on silver paint in the hope that if there was a break that i couldn't see the silver paint will connect up that break so there's continuity through it it doesn't matter that it's covered on here because it's all enameled anyway so do you see what i mean it's not going to short between the good wires that's covered in enamel coating it's only going to join up the break of the wire in the hope that there's a little bit of wire exposed on both ends of the break that the silver paint can connect to i've done this in the past and it's definitely worked but that's where i've physically seen damage on the coil and i just put a tiny dot of silver paint on here I'm just hoping by coating it all over that it may work. What I'm doing as well is I'm using hot air every now and then to dry it because it only goes conductive when it's dry. And I'm also using my meter every now and then to see if it suddenly changes from the mega ohms into maybe kilo ohms. And that would suggest then that I've gone across the break. But while I'm doing that, I'll give a shout out to the My Maintenance Massive. The members this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, DJVG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeke's C, Anthony Dean, Bazatu, Ross Mellinson, Ellis Garbutt, Gaspar Heller, Richard Bergland, Jacob Culpin, Matt Rawlins, Soul Reaver 555, and an old favourite, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations. So many thanks to each and every one of you. So, unfortunately, I do cover the whole thing in conductive paint, and it doesn't make any difference at all. Which makes me think that possibly it's not the outer wire that's gone. Maybe this wasn't damaged from a screwdriver. Maybe it's just failed. So then I start looking at the inside wire because there's two wires remember it starts off on the inner cores and it keeps wrapping it around itself until you have the outer wire on the outer core but it's possible that the wire is broken on the inner core obviously adding silver conductive paint isn't going to help that because how do you get to the inner cores but when i start messing with the inner wire it breaks very easily so I think what may have happened is a screwdriver might have slipped and gone straight onto the wire, in which case then I didn't need to put all this silver paint on, but annoyingly it didn't show up through the microscope. But when I solder on another little bit of wire to the inner wire to extend it out, look what then happens on my meter. Well, check this out. So I thought, is there a chance it could be the middle one that's broken just there? And as I wiggled it, it snapped just a few millimeters from here. And now look, look at my meter. Can you see now? It's 1.75 thousand ohms, which sounds about right. Now in the name of entertainment, I have fast forwarded and cut quite a lot out of this video. I was on it for quite a while. I actually ended up breaking the outer wire as well. So I had to extend the inner wire of the coil and I had to bodge up the outer wire of the coil by wrapping new wire around the coil and then putting silver conductive paint all over it to make contact with the broken outer wire. 100% I've proved the coil is at fault because it was open and now we have a reading from it. I just want to see if this watch will tick again. I've already ordered up a replacement movement from eBay. It was £20 plus I think it was £3 postage. Is it worth spending that much on this watch? Probably not, but the very fact that I've spent a few hours on it on the video it's worth it to me. It's £23, have a working product at the end and satisfaction. The biggest part for me is finding out what the fault was, proving the fault, and also making a bodge to get it working again. Once I see this tick, I'm happy. The video is complete. And then I can just change the movement in its own time. Changing the movement is not entertaining. Fixing the problem is by whatever means necessary. In this instance here, I had to go too far. If I had to just put a dab of conductive paint on, and I've done that in the past, fantastic. That's a lasting fix. Doing what I've done here is a complete bodge job. And now I'm just clutching at straws in order to get a tick to tick for the video. But that's where I get my entertainment from. So I have now got continuity through the coil I put some nail varnish across the coil to give it some protection and I'm just putting it together to hopefully show you it tick at the end 
but I promise you I've bought one on eBay. In fact, I'll flash it up on screen now. And then you know that down the line, this watch will be fixed properly. But for this moment in time, at least I will hopefully show you a tick on the video. Right now, there you go. I've set the time and it is keeping time. So look at the second hand down here on my one. Boom. And it's got the hacking feature as well. So when you pull out the crown, it does stop the second hand so you can get perfect time. Oh, oh, hail my mate Vince, look at that tick. How good am I? The master of watch repair. All those naysayers that say I'm no good at watch repair. Well, look at this. Unfortunately, it only lasts about 15 seconds because look at this second hand now, ticking away nicely, keeping time with my uh, Chinese special watch on the right hand side. But then in about five seconds, it holds on to one second for too long. Around about now, I think. Hold on, hold on. There. It's held on to it for too long, you see, and it give a little twitch and now it's off again. It will do that one more time before stopping completely right about now. It holds on to that one and then it will keep advancing and now look completely stopped. So I think what's happening is we have now got continuity through the coil. The coil hasn't failed already. I think it's some sort of imbalance. Obviously now the resistance has changed on the coil with all the conductive paint and me adding a wire, which is about 10 or 20 times the size of the fine wires that are already there. And I think now the magnetic fields have gone wrong because a stepper motor needs to turn at one time a second. It just gives a little pulse and goes round. I think what's happening is it's getting confused and it doesn't know whether to go forward or backwards because if you look closely, I think I remember, I don't know if I can see it on screen, the second hand is twitching. It's just it's very hard to see, but it's not advancing. So look, we proved the fault was on the coil. I did more than what most people would do. To get it to tick at all, really is a miracle considering the inner wire was broken. Annoyingly, if I'd seen the inner wire was broken, I could have done a permanent fix here. But in order to prove that, I ended up breaking the outer wire and there was just conductive paint everywhere. So, you know, I proved the fault, fault onto the coil, but in this instance, I couldn't fix it because unlike other ones I've worked on, the fault wasn't on the outer wires, it was on the inner wire, which is a real shame. But in hindsight now, it would have been fixable if I spotted the break on the inner wire but I didn't spot it even when looking through the microscope. So all I'm gonna do is pop the new movement in. Originally, I was gonna just put a new circuit board in because that'd be the easiest thing to do. But realistically, there's probably wears. I, I can tell that this watch has had a lot of wear. There's probably wear on the little gears now as well. So I've bought the movement. I might as well put the whole movement in. And really then, apart from the sorry state of the case of this watch, it will work like a new watch again because the hands haven't worn out, the dial hasn't worn out, it's just the movement itself. So once the movement gets put in, bang, you've got a nice new working watch again. So enough of this watch now. Massive thanks to Chris for sending it out to me. Let's move on to the next PO box item and hopefully we will have more success with that one. Here we have what is known as an iDog. This is the iDog Dance released in 2008 and it says here, Hasbro 2008 Sega Toys Limited. So it looks like a Sega designed the thing. So what it's supposed to do is dance along to the music and also if you input a jack into here, you can play music through it like a speaker. Now Adam from Norfolk Man Cave sent this over to me. I think it was around Christmas time. I've been meaning to look at it for ages. When I first all put batteries in it, from memory it didn't stand up properly. And I thought, okay, I'll look at that another time. I wasn't really looking forward to it because I thought it was gonna be white nylon gears on the inside, which is kind of stripped. And I thought, oh, here we go again, because you know what I'm like with them. I never seem to have any success. Uh, but I got it out today and what I did is I just did this. I kind of clicked it like that. I won't keep doing it in case I break, uh, break it, but I clicked it like that and I also hit the reset button when I had batteries in. So I put batteries in, there's three AA batteries in here. There's a little bit of corrosion that we have to clean up and I hit reset and now it appears to be working okay. So if I hold down the nose, it will do what it needs to do. So basically it's got like an interactive thing here. So if I hold this down here, I think it's now because I've bent it like that, it will need to reset. There you go, so it's reset now. So if I hold this down here, he will stand up, he taps his paw, he does quite a lot of things. Or is it the other way? It dances if you do uh, certain movements on the face. There we go.
I like the foot, but it's only that foot, not this foot here. So it appears to do what it needs to do, but I have found a fault with it. So we need to clean up the battery terminals. Let me just, no, I won't bother turning it off. Basically, if I plug my phone into it, there's a little hidden jack just here, and it's it's not right. To begin with, it ejects it like it's disgusted with it, but then when it doesn't eject it, look at that. It's uh, it's not playing properly. So if I plug that one in there, which is slightly smaller, and if I play some music on my phone, it will come and go. There, and then go. And go. So there's obviously something wrong there. So let's try and fix that up. Now this is going to disappoint a few people because some of you would like to see a repair on this. The problem is when I got it, it was making weird clicking sounds and it wouldn't stand up properly. But then months later, six months later, however long it's been, the only thing I can find wrong with it, like I just showed you, is that it seems to eject a jack. So I spent ages taking this apart. And I was right, it is a nightmare on the inside. So as much as I love Adam and his videos, unfortunately this device here is a complete and utter headache. And I think I spent four or five hours on it. I'm not gonna show you any of it because it's pointless. I'll tell you why. I spent ages taking it apart and it's a nightmare. One of the screws is seized up. I actually have to use a soldering iron to melt through the plastic to get access to the screw to then unscrew it. Uh, but it's on the inside so it can't be seen. But after all that, the headphone jack that I want to fix, well not a headphone jack, but the aux in jack, is actually a sealed unit. It's not one that you can get access to the, the contacts to prise out. It's all sealed. If you imagine like an Xbox One controller jack, that's sealed. When it fails, you just buy a new one and put it in. So uh, there's nothing actually wrong with the jack. I think maybe that this was sold with a special lead that has a slightly thinner housing you know a thinner shroud so it pushes fully in because all the leads I've got they're a little bit too big so they don't want to fit in and I know sometimes devices are sold with their own lead because then you see when it fails it's an easy way for the manufacturer to make money I'm not saying that is the case here but every lead that I've tried is too big to fit in it comfortably hence the reason it ejects anytime it does a bit of movement but the long and short of it is, by putting some deoxit in there and stuff and putting it all back together, I do get it to work. Then I tell Adam that I had a, a bit of a nightmare with it and I'll send it back to him. And a couple of weeks later, I went to send it back to him and I went to turn it on and it was doing the same clicking that it was six months previously. So all the hours I spent on this, it wasn't doing that clicking. And then when I go to post it off again, it's clicking again. So basically, I've made no difference to it. It was 40 and it's still faulty. So what I've said to Adam is that when he comes to do the respray on the Rolls Royce, I'm gonna to look to buy one of these for him and then I'll just give him a working one because I failed miserably on this. He sent it to me and I sent it back to him in the same state, but just with the insides more messed up because some of it's burnt now on the inside. So I don't really wanna spend the next six hours editing up this part of the video because I haven't actually fixed anything. Hence the reason I'm just fast forwarding it through. So uh, massive apologies, Adam, if you are watching this and apologies to everybody else who thought they were gonna see a fix on a little Sega dog. You never know. Well, I was gonna say maybe in the future I would look at another one. No way, no way, it was hell. <laughs> it was hell to work on. So hence the reason I'm just fast forwarding through this. But I promise you the next product has an interesting fault. So don't just turn off now. Check out the last product in this uh, video because it's really unusual and I actually learned something that I've never known. So if I didn't know this, I think quite a few of you others wouldn't know this as well, especially maybe if you're a bit younger than me. So anyway, apologies, but uh, let's move on to the next item. Right, next up, this is a real weird one. We have a digital alarm clock and uh, it says here, to my mate Vince, love the videos. I have my own channel at Ryu Gaming and uh, do gaming videos, plus I'm getting into repair. Anyway, this clock is weird, just the stuff you like. Is it a digital alarm clock that gains time as the days pass? It says, uh, made them late a few times. Made early a few times, probably. It's gaining time. Anyway, it says, the vids, uh, I was watching the shower one yesterday. What a flood, all the best. And it's really weird. You plug it in and it will work perfectly, but then after about like 45 minutes or so, 
it will start going quick and it really does go quick. So I've got a little bit of footage now that I'll show you because uh, I looked at this eight, I, I looked at this months and months and months ago. So here is the footage filmed earlier on in the year when I still had my sore finger. Luckily that's healed nicely now. And uh, as you can see from here, every 52 seconds on my watch is one minute on the clock radio. How weird is that? So I'll show you that now on this next bit. Right, so that's 52 seconds. Let me just reset that. And then when it goes over to 57 here, I'll do it again and see if it comes up as 52 seconds again. And again, 52 seconds. So uh, yeah, it's gaining eight seconds every minute at the moment. So uh, maybe it's heat related. I'm thinking possibly capacitors. Let's open it up and see what is going on. So it's a nice easy item to take apart. We just need to undo the Phillips screws and then we can get rid of the case. And then I'm gonna undo some more screws holding the circuit board down. And let's look at the board to see if we can see anything obvious. What is causing this to run so fast after a period of time? Eight seconds over the minute over a whole day would really start to add up. A really unusual fall in my opinion. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the board. Look at the way they've done this, it looks so cheap. But well, it works. This is for the radio. It just moves along there. It's quite clever, actually. Uh, let's undo these. Let's measure the caps. That's the only thing I can see that's, that could be wrong with it, because this has got quite a bit of age to it. And I think what's happening is, as something's heating up, one of the caps is giving a bad signal. So then the chip gets confused, maybe. Chip responsible for the time. So let's get the ESR meter out and let's go across some of the caps to see whether some of them look like they're iffy. I mean, none of them are bulged. And I can't see any crystal or anything here that keeps the time, so it must be one of the chips. In fact, to give us a clue, I'm gonna get the markings off some of these chips and let's see if I can find any data sheets because that might help me identify what chip is responsible for the time. And then you see maybe I can concentrate on the capacitors near that one there. Right, so this one up here, it says it's uh, CD7368 and it says it is a portable tape recorder for low power radio audio amplifier circuit. So maybe this just powers the speaker. Not too sure. I'm not going to worry about that one just yet. Let me uh, move on to one of the others. All right, this is interesting. I haven't gone through it all yet, but this big chip here is an LM8560, and it says digital clock circuit diagram with alarms. So somebody's written about it here. It's uh, It's got loads of different features, so it will power the display, and it will also do an alarm speaker, stuff like that. But what's interesting is at the very, very bottom, it says here, this digital clock uses 50 hertz house supply line as time, but in case of power failure, power supply failure, it will not work. So that's why you would need the battery backup because there's an option to put a nine volt battery in at the back here. And it says here, if a crystal oscillator is used with circuit, it will be most useful, which says to me that it doesn't use a crystal oscillator as a circuit. So is it getting its power then, sorry, it's time in, from the 50 hertz AC signal coming in. It sounds like it is. So why would that be failing? Does it mean it's a transformer failure? That's interesting, isn't it? So it's not, something else isn't generating the, the, the time. It's using the AC on the way in, I think. Now that's where I'm completely lost. I think this might have to be one for a revisit video because I, I, I don't understand how it works. But basically, if you have a look here, there is a pin out for it. And you can see that pin one's gonna be here. But look at these pins here. We've got an opportunity to do 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz because I presume this could be sold worldwide. So here in the UK we're 50 Hertz, but then maybe in America it might be 60 Hertz. And uh, so we can select it on pin 26 
and then the input for it is on pin 25, so that's one, two, three. So the select pin is three from the top, and then the input one is four from the top. Let's zoom in, because it looks like there's some waxy gunk around that. And I wonder, has it become conductive? Maybe it's thinking it's a 60 hertz signal once it warms up. So look, this would be the, uh, the pin here for the select and this is the input. Can you see we've got this kind of like uh, glue here for these wires. I wonder is has the glue become some has it become conductive at all? Let's see if the if we get any resistance reading off that glue. No we're not are we? Hmm, don't think it's that. I was wondering if it would become conductive, whether or not it would be, uh, be touching it. But it hasn't. Well, that's a shame. So I want to see where this fourth pin goes to. So it's the fourth pin along. One, two, three, four. So it's this one here. It's up to a resistor down to that capacitor 105 so that's going to be one zero and then five zeros after that and it's measuring 0 0.6 meg ohms 0.6 don't know because it could be in parallel with this here you see that's measuring 100k it goes to there so would this be a capacitor here just a little ceramic one. Don't think that's going to have failed. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this. Ah, uh, it could be a revisit one. So the wire's going in at the bottom, and it looks like we've got two different voltages coming out at the top: the blue and the red, and the white and the black. Right, I'm just going to plug it in. I just want to see what voltages are coming out here. It's going to be AC because it's a transformer. I'm not going to be putting my fingers near the bottom. This top bit here should be low voltage, but I'm still going to take care. So I'm just going to plug it in now. Okay, and it's flashing at the front here. Let's see what AC voltage we have. Right, so we've got three volts there. It's going to be three, three point five, three, three point five. See, I'm not used to AC stuff. Let's see if this one's stable. More stable, still fluctuating. Three, three point five. That seems uh, that doesn't seem right, does it? But what would cause that? Are the windings breaking down? No, it's settled. What? Four point four. Isn't that weird? Fifty hertz. You can see it up here. Hmm. See, I don't know anything about transformers. I thought they'd just work or they don't work. You know, I thought they'd work or go open circuit. But is it possible if if some of the windings are maybe shortened against each other that it's still working but it's not giving the correct voltage? All right, let's go between pin 15 and 20 and then let's see what voltage the chip's taking. Right, 10.3 volts. Now, is that the same as this here? So I suppose the AC is coming in there and then it's working its way to DC through. And where's the diodes? Oh, here we go, there's diodes here, up here. So it's ch changing it to DC to feed that chip there. I wonder, is the connection bad? Let's give a wiggle and see if... Uh, let's wiggle these wires and see if it changes. I've 
got to be careful, I'm going to end up shorting these. Let me let me solder a tiny little wire on, and then I can do it. Uh, I can do it safely. What I want to do is I want to wiggle these wires and see if the voltage on the chip changes. No, but it is climbing. Do you reckon maybe after like 45 minutes it climbs to more than that? Yeah, look, it's still climbing. Right, it doesn't appear to be moving with the wires. I don't think it's a wire problem. Well, right, I've just flipped the board over. This is the positive one here. So before I was measuring, I think it was the negative here and here. And you can see there, we get a reading. But from here, it goes through a zero ohm resistor, heads off this way. But it also goes to this point here, which is a capacitor. So if I go between here and here, you can see the voltage. And the voltage is the same. It started at 10.349. In fact, it's gone down now. I wonder, should I just change that capacitor here? next to that chip. Maybe it's just that that's failed. So I am, how long have we been on? We've been on five minutes and the voltage hasn't changed. So let's uh, unplug it and I'm gonna unsolder that cap and we'll see if changing it fixes things because I can't actually see anything wrong here. So I think, uh, I just think it's gonna be a capacitor issue given the age. So this is 100 microfarad, 10 volts. Let's see what reading we're getting out of it. Ooh, 73. That's a little low. A little low. Let's check the ESR on it. I'll tell you what, let me get another 10 volt, uh, 100 microfarad out. Right, so I'll use a 16 volt one here. Let me measure this one here and see if this is measuring anything. Okay, when I put the good one in, it is giving me a read in here. So now, why isn't this one? Oh, it is, it is now. Okay, ESR looks okay, but the, uh, the capacitance definitely doesn't. So maybe this could be the faulty one. Let's have a little look here on the good one. 114, so that's a little high. But this one's definitely a little low. I don't know if it is this or not. I think I'm gonna swap it over and leave it plugged in for an hour and see if it keeps time. Because this one is definitely reading low. Yeah, 74. Right, let's pop this one in. I'm not sure if it's a transformer, if it's a capacitor, or if it's something else. I think given the age of it, I think it could be capacitor related. Right, so I'm just gonna, uh, I won't put it back together. I'm just gonna turn it on, make sure nobody else in the house messes with it. And I'm gonna set the time compared to my watch here. And we'll see after, uh, I don't know, I'll go have my dinner or something. And then afterwards I'll see if it's keeping time or not. Well, it's looking good. 8.26 and it's still 8.26 here. So it hasn't sped up at all yet. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bit of editing I think before it happened after around 45 minutes. The problem is though, I have got the case off it. So maybe it's not getting as warm as it was before. Let me, uh, and I could put it back together, but then it's gonna reset itself. Let me just rest that on there. It's still not gonna be the same as it was before because it was encased before. 
but I'll give it another half an hour or so. You never know, it could be, it could be the cleaning off those pins somehow, it could be changing out the capacitor, I mean that was low on capacitance, or it could just be a time thing, excuse the pun, and maybe after another hour or two it will start speeding up. Right, good news, I can see it says 10.47 down here, and that is the correct time. So whatever I've done, it's working now. I'm not sure whether it was the capacitor, maybe it was the taking off the transformer out, I've just wiggled something and it started to work again, or maybe it was that gunk around the pins, because that pin was to do with the 50 and 60 hertz, and apparently with the 50 and 60 hertz, if you were to use this clock on an area that is 60 hertz, it can be up to 20% times difference. 50 plus 20 percent of course 60 yeah so uh, yeah you would have it 20 percent quicker or slower wouldn't you anyway it's working now and it wasn't before i don't really know why that is let me put it back together and i'll finish up the video so there we have it, that is the end of this video here. A massive thanks to all the viewers that sent in items to the PO Box. I will be doing more of these videos in the future because I have a few items built up over the last couple of years that have been sent in to the PO Box. Some stuff interesting, some stuff not so interesting, but it can surprise you. This one here by far was my favorite, not because of the fix, because I'm not 100% sure it is fixed, but the fact that time can be taken, can be referenced against a mains grid. So I never knew that. So with the AC signal, you've got positive, negative, positive, negative. And every time it crosses over the zero volt, I think that's where it takes its reference from. So in the UK, it would be 50 times a second. In the US and other countries, it would be 60 times a second. So it's a nice cheap way for manufacturers to get the time on their clocks rather than using a separate watch crystal. I thought that was really, really interesting. And what's more interesting for me is how accurate the grid must be. So to allow companies to take the measurement from that. I can't quite get my head around that. I thought with voltage, it would, uh, with mains AC, I thought it would be more variable than that. But I suppose with this, it doesn't matter whether in one minute it's a tiny bit slow as long as the next minute it's a tiny bit fast because this isn't doing accurate timing like for example if you're doing a 100 meter sprint it only needs to be accurate over the whole day or whole week or whole month or whole year and I suppose the grid probably is quite accurate over the whole year well it must be because clocks are taking their rest from that so I think that is really really interesting. So that is it for this video this is now a day later and a appears to be still keeping time so i don't know what's going on with it i don't know how i fixed it but it appears to be fixed before i go i want to give a massive shout out to david david works at the mgm grand i was lucky enough to spend a vacation a holiday in america and we were staying at the mgm grand in las vegas me and a family went to book a show cirque du soleil and at the box office normally in places like that you need id when you book something and he was like it's okay i know vince so i was like what and he was like yes i watch all your videos and it wasn't a case of oh are you that guy of the internet he knew all the videos he loved the rolls royce videos his favorite video was the ColecoVision, so he's clearly been watching for quite a long time and on the back of the videos he's now got into repair himself he's uh, bought himself a soldier nine he's trying to get his son into it so it was just it made my day i've only been recognized once before and that was going down the escalator at London Euston. I'm not very good with names. I think his name was Trevor. Sorry if I got that wrong. For some reason, Nigel's coming into my head, but I'm sure it was Trevor. Uh, but that's it. In all the time I've been doing this, I've been recognised twice. But uh, yeah, it's. I really enjoyed America, but that, I, I don't know why, I just had such a good chat with him, I couldn't get the smile off my face. And also, on behalf of MGM Grand as well, he uh, gave us a voucher for a meal out. So really, really nice. Best photo of America is this one though. So we were coming out of an Uber cab. My son said, Dad, have a look at this. And um, basically taking a picture of the front headrest, the back of the front headrest. Look at that. Clearly the lady wasn't wearing a seatbelt. The car must have braked with some force and she got side face planted into it. Obviously I hope she hasn't hurt herself, but that looks like a piece of art. Look how perfect the imprint is. You can actually make out full on features. I can even see at the side, I can see her ear. So uh, yeah, really, really good photo. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. If you enjoyed the video, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Take care, everyone. I can't